Hello everybody, this is uh, Matt from that Matt 85 and uh, welcome to the tech chat that we're having today on the uh, streamcast. Uh, today we'll be talking about a lot of the console news that just dropped earlier this week, uh, specifically the Xbox One S and what's inside it, what does it mean for the games, how does it compare to the Xbox One, sorry, the Xbox Series X. How does it compare to PS5? Um, and there's a lot to talk about here. First, before we get into that, I want to promote myself a little bit here. Uh, so, on here, I like to do uh, tech chats usually once a week. Usually on Saturdays, this is kind of a uh, catch-up because I was busy last week, but also because uh, we, we had a lot of news drop and a lot of people talking about this, and I wanted to try and get a, a stream in here. Once this is over, I'm going to be uploading it to YouTube, and uh, you can check out YouTube, search for that Matt85. I don't know the exact uh, link. I don't know if they do youtube.com slash that Matt85, but I'm under that Matt85 where I have this and more, including uh, computer builds, uh, game rev not really reviews, but game uh, just kind of quick reviews and streams, uh, usually of old games. Um, some uh, history, a lot of different technology stuff. If you're a technology buff or into video games or just want to uh, find out a little bit more about the stuff that you love, uh, check it out. Um, that being said, if you want to know when I'm streaming, when I got stuff uploaded, you want to look at my Twitter account. That'd be uh, twitter.com. Look for that Matt 85 at that Matt 85 I'll be uh, posting links to my content as well as a uh, schedule if I'm doing surprise chats like today, uh, when I'm doing streams, uh, when I'm doing other podcasts. And speaking of other podcasts, me and my buddy John Bear do a wrestling podcast on Wednesdays. We just did it uh, yesterday, and that's Wednesdays at 6 o'clock Eastern Time. You want to catch that if you are into WWE, AEW, or anything else in the world of wrestling. And I do a movie review podcast with my buddy, Pat. Uh, that'd be up on YouTube um, under Bearded Reviews. So, uh, and I guess one more thing to add to that. I've been streaming... Uh, Fall Guys, I do plan on streaming Fall Guys just whenever I want to play it because it's fun to play. I can play it on my computer through a remote play and get that on uh, Twitch for you guys to watch if you're interested. Uh, besides that, I just recently got installed and working um, Flight Simulator. I want to do some Flight Simulation uh, while you guys are um, checking it out. I also have uh, just got a arcade stick so I can play some arcade games through my computer which would be interesting to uh, stream. Also got a uh, steering wheel controller so I can play some racing games and I can also broadcast that if you guys are interested. So we will see how all of that goes but that's uh, for future uh, streams. So back on topic today, not today, earlier this week, uh, Xbox, okay, so here's the timeline. We had uh, rumors abound, of course, but then we had someone uh, more credentialed post on Twitter that there is an Xbox One S and that it's going to be priced at $299. And... This started making news. You had Xbox respond to it by posting a meme of uh, a shifty eyes, like "Oh no, what happened?" That was pretty funny. Uh, and the next day, you had an official announcement through a Windows website. I don't remember exactly what it was called. Posting that, in fact, the Xbox One S is a thing. This is what it looks like. It's two ninety nine. There's also the Xbox One X, Xbox Series X. I keep saying One X. There's also the Xbox Series X, uh, still at uh, 
and we've already seen what that looks like and what it has in it and uh, then Xbox went ahead and said okay this is the official tweet uh, and uh, confirmed all of this to us it's also going to be up for pre uh, we call that pre-order September 22nd or something like that I'll have to check on that because uh, that night at midnight or that morning whenever they're going to actually put it up on the different places that you can pre-order it I will want to make sure I am there to pre-order it and uh, what else a few other things oh right so yeah so we have a few things to compare it to so we have uh, if you remember the Xbox one generation uh, which I guess technically is the current generation there's an Xbox one s which is kind of like a cheaper version of the Xbox one uh, a little more compact and all that stuff and that's kind of what they're going for here they have a and I didn't know this was going to happen especially as a launch day they have the Xbox One X, the premium, Xbox Series X, the premium, and they have the Xbox Series S, uh, which will still play the Xbox One games, but they are, but it is uh, scaled down a bit and costs less. And we'll go over the uh, specifics here in a minute. Um, and then, uh, so what PlayStation's doing, and now that Xbox finally let it out of the bag, what it's going to cost? Do you think uh, PlayStation might? follow suit here soon and we'll see exactly how that goes because at PlayStation they have just the one console they don't have variations of it yet they have the console with the disk drive which is rumored to be about uh, $4.99 just like the Xbox and they have the uh, console without the disk drive uh, rumored to be $100 less at $3.99 now that's a $100 difference between the Xbox One S and the PlayStation with no disk drive. And that's going to be a uh, big point here, especially if that pricing sticks. Uh, this might cause Sony to want to change some pricing from what we've heard. But uh, according from what I've heard, with what is inside the PlayStation 5, having it cost less than $500 would be hard for them and to have uh, the no disk drive one cost less than $400 would be very hard for them it'd be uh, more of a loss than they're already at so if you're looking at the PlayStation uh, 5 the two different types that they have you're basically it's a hundred dollar difference in the hundred dollars and again this is a speculation but it's about a hundred dollars difference and the hundred dollars difference is going straight into the H uh, not HD DVD but the um, 4K Blu-ray Ultra HD Blu-ray disk drive and you might be thinking you know one disk drive for $100 is that really worth it and it's kind of yes or no if you're wanting to use your PlayStation 5 to play 4K movies uh, 4K Ultra HD players are still $100 to $200 um, so that I mean that is about what you would expect. Hi there to Corey. Thanks for stopping in. I'm glad uh, we got you crossing over to my channel here. Uh, as I mentioned before, we're talking about the announcement of the Xbox One S and we're comparing it to the Xbox, sorry, the Xbox Series S. We're comparing it to the Xbox Series X and we're comparing it to the Sony PS5. Um, hopefully that's a little interesting to you, but we're gonna go over what it is, its price points, uh, what's inside of it, how is it gonna play games, how it affects everything, and that's what we're doing here today. Uh, and that in fact is a picture of it on the screen there that is the Xbox One S and if you know the size of a uh, uh, Xbox One controller then that gives you the size of the console it's going to be like uh, this um, what would you compare that to I don't know I don't know what you compare it to, to. <laughs> but it's uh, as they're touting the smallest Xbox console hey dude food good to see you in here I know you're interested in uh, the specs here, and we're going to get to that. Uh, what I'm interested in first before we get into the nitty-gritty is uh, what are people going to buy? And I'm not here to sell one to you or the other to you. I'm not here to say that this one has better specs, so it's a better uh, console and you should get it. Because 
between the PS5 and the Xbox uh, Series X, the specs are very, very, very close. I believe Xbox Series X is edging out the PS5 a little bit, but not so much that I think that it's going to really matter for people that are playing. Uh, what it mostly comes down to is what games you're getting. Um, and as far as games goes, I've mentioned this before in Dude Foods chat last night. I'm more of a Japanese gamer. I like the uh, type of games that come out with the uh, Japanese RPGs. Very story driven, very tactical, very art, uh, high, high art uh, games. Uh, American games are usually a little more blood and guts, uh, realism, uh, wanting to live out your fantasy uh, badass self, shooting people up in Grand uh, Theft Auto V, shooting people up in Gears of War, shooting people up in Battlefield, uh, and sports games. And that's not to say that uh, any of that's bad, it's just not my taste. I'm more into the uh, put on my... Uh, cleric robes, put on my adventure sword, become a paladin and beat down the monsters uh, kind of uh, RPG friendly type of person but here's uh, the, the catch in that is that Xbox not just announcing uh, the console, they're really 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 gearing up on their Xbox Game Pass uh, and so what is the Game Pass? The Game Pass is a subscription and I believe at the moment it's like twelve dollars a month or less if you get it on sale or if you buy several months at a time and it unlocks a library of games for you that you can pick a game that you want download it to your console and play it as if uh, you bought the game um, as long as you have the subscription and if you uh, get rid of the subscription it's gonna say you don't have the game you can't play it so then you actually have to buy it but uh, for me, I find a game like I did with Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, downloaded it, played it all the way through, uh, deleted it. Now I don't really care if uh, I don't have ownership of the game anymore. It's not a big uh, problem for me. I'm not as much of a collector anymore of games, so I'm just wanting the game on the cheap. And if uh, I paid for what, what, for what I paid, it was about like 6 or $7 a month, I was able to get... Uh, I was able to get, uh, you know, my money's worth. <laughs> I've already got my money's worth. I got a lot of games to choose from that I want to play. I'm working it inside uh, the other games that I already own. Normally, I would buy a game, I would play it, I would sell it, get a lot of that money back. Uh, but in this case, it's already cheap enough. Uh, an Xbox. So Sony also has something like this called Sony, uh, it's called PlayStation Now. There we go, PlayStation Now. Um, very similar. Some of the games you download to your console and you play it. Some of them you stream through the cloud. And I'm not sure if, what the difference is there, if it's just smaller games so you're not streaming as much or what, uh, or if you even notice the difference, whether it's on your hard drive or not. Um, I'd have to try it out to give you a full review of I like this or I don't like this. But... The thing about PlayStation Now is it's uh, lacking in titles, as a lot of people say. I looked at the list, and I like a lot of the titles that are on there. They're older games, and that's to be expected. Uh, but that's something you want to look at before you purchase, is what games are on here. You know, pick out, I want you know, I want to play these four games instead of paying uh, $60 a game. I can, or I guess if they're discounted by now, 20 or $30 a game. Uh, I'm going to download, or I'm going to buy this service. Uh, for a month or two to cost me maybe 20 bucks and you get all those games um, Yeah, and like Corey's saying you get a seven-day free trial if you haven't already tried these things to so really try it out uh, I initially was using Game Pass's free trials to be able to play online so I could play Fantasy Star online and uh, While I was on there I was like hey, we got these games too and I checked it out I'm like oh man This is pretty amazing so the other thing with Xboxes is that it also works for PC games so a lot of the games you can play on PC as well as the console for example Microsoft Flight Sim that I have downloaded and put on my computer instead of playing it on my console uh, so the thing with Game Pass uh, is that it started out a lot like PlayStation Now where they had older games and not a whole lot of games 
uh, they kind of upgraded that. They put in a lot more games. So you have a lot of games to choose from, but they upgraded that even. They put in good games. Not just uh, whatever games are out there, they put in good games like Red Dead Redemption 2, especially first-party Microsoft games. And not only that, they then upgraded to put in games as soon as they're being released, depending on what game it is. For example, Microsoft Flight Sim. But as far as Xbox Series X goes, they've announced that a lot of, uh, I think they announced like 30 games, including a lot of really good games, like the new Halo, is going to be on the Xbox Game Pass um, day one. You don't have to wait for it. You don't have to wait a while for it. Uh, if you're into Halo or any of the other games that they had shown during the little event, then you're going to have access to it day one if you have Xbox Game Pass. Not only that, they just announced also that they have uh, put EA Play, the Electronic Arts uh, subscription um, thing, as part of Xbox uh, Game Pass. So um, if you want to play any of the newer... Uh, sports titles minus MLB unfortunately uh, but if you want to play NHL 20 if you want to play NFL or Madden 20 if you want to play FIFA 20 they're all going to be included on the game pass as well as uh, the Star Wars games that they've been making the battle uh, field battlefield battlefront battlefront uh, games uh, all the different EA games which uh, they haven't been as amazing as they have been in the past, but they put out some pretty good stuff. Uh, the newest Star Wars game I enjoyed as I went through it. Uh, so that's that's a ton of value right there. It, and that's really impressed me. I can get an Xbox One X, not worry about having to buy a bunch of $60, $70 games. I can uh, use my Game Pass and have fun with it right there. Yeah, UFC 4... Uh, I know a lot of people have been talking about that being a new game, and as far as uh, sports go, I, it's not what I initially think of when I think of sports, but it is a sports game, and it's a big title for EA. Uh, so, setting that aside for the moment, we're going to look at um, as far as the pricing goes. So, we were talking about this before. PlayStation looks like they're going to be about $500 unless they want to try and undercut Xbox now that Xbox is out. If you want to get the no disk drive, uh, it's a hundred dollars less, and that just means you're not gonna you're not gonna buy actual games. Uh, the downside to that is some people are still a little iffy on digital games, which I'm not so much anymore. One because I'm not uh, a collector anymore, so I don't feel like I need to have that disc sitting on my shelf for all of eternity. Uh, but also, as far as PlayStation goes, Sony and Microsoft with Xbox. As long as they're around, you're going to have access to that content, at least for a long while. I know with uh, my Sony PSP, I believe the PSP store is dead. So if I want my digital PSP games, I'm not sure I can download them onto my PSP anymore. Which honestly for me isn't a problem because I've hacked my PSP and I can put whatever games I want on it. But uh, And also if you have a PS Vita, you can use that instead of the PSP to play the PSP games. But that goes to show you that over time you might actually lose access to that content but my point being with Sony and Microsoft these companies are big they're uh, going to be around for a long while I trust them to have the content available for me for a good long uh, time so I'm not as worried about that as far as the digital content goes um, the downside for me would be again I buy games I play them and then I sell them to recoup some of the money so am I going to uh, get an all digital PlayStation 5 and if there's a game out and I want to play it day one, I want to play it really early, I'm going to have to buy the disc for the game. Uh, or not to buy the disc. If it's digital, I'm going to have to buy it digitally, which means I'm going to be buying it at full price. I'm not going to find a used copy of it. I'm not going to be able to resell it later and recoup that money. That's, that's the crutch for me. Or do I want to uh, see if they step up PlayStation now? They haven't really announced it, so I don't have huge hopes for that. So I think with PlayStation 5, I'm wanting to go the disc route. For me personally and that's not going to be for everybody I think the extra hundred dollars I'm paying I can uh, watch 4k movies and that'll be great and I can also uh, you can get money back from PlayStation I'm gonna have to check that out Corey uh, I wonder if they're gonna have a buyback uh, system because it's kind of funny last last generation Xbox announced that the, the Xbox one was going to be digital only no discs not even an option and PlayStation came out 
they they saw the reaction and the reaction was oh my god nobody's gonna want this a lot of people upset and sony came out and announced that they are not all digital granted they already tried that with the playstation uh portable go where it was all digital but they announced they're not all digital with the ps4 it's going to have a disk drive and they even showed how you lend copies of games to your friends you give it to them blup, like that whereas xbox had this whole thing where like oh you have games and you can lend it to a friend but you gotta set a date on it and while they have it you can't play it and it's all digital and you assign it this way and that way so that was a uh that turned out to be a big problem and xbox got a little bit of a reputation for not being user friendly well the tables have turned this time around um sony still got the option for a disk drive but when you have that comparison of i can have to pay a hundred dollars more to get this disk drive it just doesn't seem as right if they only had one ps5 it had a disk drive and was five hundred dollars to be honest it would uh, just it would seem better because you don't have that comparison point on the other hand you have xbox here uh, they've learned their lesson they're being super consumer friendly uh, as as well as the xbox series x having the disk drive you have the series s no disk drive it's not a hundred dollars less it's two hundred dollars less it's a little cool down on the uh, on the specs, which we're going to get to here in a second. Um, but that's why we think that the PlayStation 5 is going to be $500 and $400 without the disk drive, because the cost of what's inside it, they can't just take that huge hit. Um, so let's bring up some of the specs here. I've heard some, and speaking of spec, although this is not what it means, but speculation, I've heard that there is a, a possibility that PlayStation 5 is going to want to compete with the price point of the Xbox Series S, and they might lower the price even more. And I'd be happy if that's the case, but again, with what's inside the Xbox, or the uh, PS5, it'd be hard for them to match that. What Xbox has done to be able to lower the price is not just take out a disk drive, but lower, uh, basically, put in not as good of a graphics card, and we're going to get into that here uh, to make up the difference. Um, so we're looking at the Xbox Series S and the Xbox Series X, and I hope you guys can see the stats there. Uh, it looks like it should be legible based on my own stream there. So we have uh, the CPU for both of the Series S and the Series X are the same. Uh, one is running at 3.8 gigahertz, one's running at 3.6 gigahertz, which is going to make a difference, a slight, slight difference um, in processing power just because of how fast it processes. We have the GPU between the two. We have, uh, as you can read there, AMD RDNA 2 GPU. What does that mean? Uh, not really anything. That's just the name of the CPU that they're, uh, GPU that they're using, the graphics processing unit. Uh, the... Xbox Series X is going to have 52 cores, and the Series S is going to have 20 cores. And that's where you're going to get, uh, basically, with uh, besides the cores, uh, the, the, process, the speed, too, is 1.825 gigahertz compared to 1.565 gigahertz. So combined, basically, the, the uh, Xbox Series X is going to be able to process three times faster the visuals for the games that you're playing. Uh, system on a chip. Uh, are the same between the two. The RAM, the uh, Series S is going to have a slightly less RAM, 10 gigs compared to 16 gigs. Uh, performance target, the Series X is going to be able to push out uh, 4K natively at 60 frames per second up to 120 frames per second and is uh, 8K ready, which I looked up how much 8K screens cost right now, and it's like $10,000, so <laughs> that's uh, not happening right now. But with the way technology grows and grows cheaper, it by the end of the lifespan for the Series X is going to be uh, possible for people to buy and get the most out of. Uh, storage, you have uh, one terabyte for the Series X, you have a half terabyte for the Series S. Um, and people were saying, you know, for a console that's all digital, why is it going to have, uh, why is it going to have half as much storage? 
Uh, well, that is a good point, but for real, who's going to need to download like uh, I guess five different terabyte large games at the or hundred gig games at the same exact time and not uh, delete one? But if you really really need that space, they're selling these terabyte uh, plug-in units. I guess it's flash memory to expand if you really want that extra space. Um, Dude food is asking, uh, is 4K 120 frames per second even a thing on PC right now in terms of what monitors people have? I know it is for high end, but even with, uh, cause like I had a, I might still have a 120 frames per second monitor, but you have to be able to push that out with your graphics card. You have to have a game that is able to push that out. Um, and you have to have a monitor that's able to, uh, display that and even when I had it all set up and running uh, I don't know if I had a game that was able to push that out uh, I didn't look too hard but it's it's a rarer thing right now it's assumed that you're gonna be running like 60 frames per second uh, and once you get up to six I mean think think about it this way in high def uh, each frame is uh, 1080p uh, 1080 by 720 uh, pixels that'd be times so 1080 times 720 pixels uh, per frame per second so you bump that up to 4k and you have like 4,000 by over 2,000 4,000 times over 2,000 pixels and you times that um, by 60 frames per second so that's just a, a heck of a lot more you know about four times as many pixels as it's having to process at the same time plus you want to crank that up to 120 frames per second that's uh, another two times as much processing as it's having to do and that's not all that the GPU does is process the pixels that it's going to display to you it has to do the calculations of the, uh, the shading the light effects the uh, special effects um, the textures it's got a whole lot to to keep tabs of and to process and to push out to your monitor um, going down the line really quick we have a backwards compatibility they both have the same kind of backwards compatibility and we're not 100% sure on that uh, what all it's going to have if it's total backwards compatibility or partial um, I believe they first announced that it was going to be able to play all Xbox One games They've backtracked and said that it's going to play several games going all the way back to the original Xbox. Uh, so we'll have to see about that. Uh, display out, they both have the same 2.1, uh, HDMI 2.1 display out, which is going to be able to enable the uh, 120 frames per second, as I've discussed with DoFood in his chat. It was a learning experience because I didn't know that the HDMI 2.1 was going to be able to do stuff like that. Um, so we go back really quick. Actually, I didn't talk about this. Sorry, performance uh, as far as uh, video goes. That Series X is doing 4K at 60 frames per second up to 120 frames per second. The Xbox Series S is doing 1440, which is a bit over uh, um, a bit over standard high definition or regular high definition at 60 frames per second up to 120 frames per second it's going to be able to upscale to 4K that's for certain games. So as you see, there's a difference between the Series S and the Series X. As I've been saying, it's mostly uh, the GPU, the, the ability to uh, display video. But there's also a little difference in RAM. There's a little difference in uh, CPU power. Uh, so what, what does this mean? How are they going to have uh, a game that works on both of these but doesn't get the most I guess but you know plays on both of these even though they have different sets of uh, what they're able to do uh, so we have these games too at least for Xbox that are going to be coming out for Xbox one but they're also for Xbox uh, sorry they're coming out for Xbox Series X but they're also f playable on Xbox one they're quote unquote optimized for Xbox Series X. This is what I think is going to how it's going to work. So if you've been if you're a PC gamer, you might know you open up a PC game, 
you go to the uh, the configuration and you're able to pick your resolution you're able to pick how much detail goes into the shading how much detail goes into the uh, ray tracing how much de how far the draw distance is uh, all these different options and the more you push it up the harder it's going to tax your GPU if you don't have a good enough graphics processor then you're going to lag or the game is going to crash so what I think this optimization quote unquote optimization means is that it's going to know are you using an Xbox Series X are you using an Xbox Series S are you using an Xbox One and depending on what you got uh, it will change its own settings to be optimized for that. Uh, much again, much in like you would set your own settings for a PC. I think this has to be the case because otherwise you have problems like you would see with uh, PlayStation 4 right now between the PlayStation 4 Pro and the PlayStation 4 uh, original which uh, I believe my last stream went over a bunch of the differentiations between those. Um, the difference between the PS4 Pro and the PS4 Original is not as great as the difference between the Xbox Series S and the Xbox Series X. Uh, and you still have a little bit of problems as we've seen with uh, MLB The Show. If you're using a PS4 Pro and you're playing in a, a professional stadium with a full crowd, you're not experiencing much, much lag, chances are. I haven't really, I have, uh, from what I've heard, p others that are using the PS4 Pro aren't seeing that much lag as much. On the other hand, if you are using original PS4, uh, I have heard that you are experiencing lag with all uh, the big amounts of crowds uh, that it has to um, generate and uh, draw for you. So that's, that's, again, the game isn't optimized to be one way or the other. It's just optimized for whatever the uh, the... I guess the game maker's uh, target is, and I guess they were targeting people to use the PS4 Pro by now, but that isn't always the case. So if we have uh, different settings like this, and we already have a precedence for it with regular PC games anyways, I believe that's how it's going to work, and I think that's uh, just fine with me. Now I've heard people saying uh, that the Xbox One S, if you want to compare it and what it has to just a regular Xbox One Sorry. These uh, the names of these consoles are driving me crazy. I, I can't keep I can keep them straight. I just can't get it out of my mouth correctly. So people are com comparing the Xbox Series S to the Xbox One X because uh, if you're looking at its uh, processor, its processor speed, its processor cores. If you're looking at its GPU GPU speed and its GPU cores. If you're looking at its, uh, I guess its ability to process and its hard drive uh, space, you're seeing a lot of similarities or things that might look like the Xbox One X is better. But it's hard to compare specifically because they aren't the same G CPUs. They aren't the same GPUs. Uh, a good example would be um, around Pentium 4 time, you were seeing processors get up to 4 gigahertz. But they weren't as good as uh, dual core processors that were running at like 2.5 or possibly 3 gigahertz. Part of it is because of the number of cores. Part of it's because the processors aren't just adding cores. They're adding, uh... yeah, uh, so let's ignore that dude. But uh, we were, where was I? Sorry, I'm already distracted. Uh, the processors aren't just getting faster. They're getting better technology. So you might have a newer processor with uh, a slower the leg, uh, lag a leg. Oh, no problem, Corey. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot. What I'm saying is there's a lot to it. The newer GPUs, like uh, for example, are using DDR6 uh, RAM, which is a faster clock speed, a, a faster technology, and it's using that as its core RAM not just the GPU RAM. So when you're seeing exact, I guess it shows on the screen, 10 gigabytes GDDR6 RAM that's made specifically for uh, gaming processors, graphic processors, uh, to be able to uh, access read and write uh, faster. 
Yeah, PS4 Slim, I believe, is a little bit of an upgrade over the the original PS4 also. So, yeah, the, the, that's where, um, again, you're seeing there's differences between the two consoles. But, again, I think they're uh, with their optimizing the game, you're not going to experience that lag. You just might not see as far draw distance, as uh, clear textures, as uh, great as, of shadows, as great of light. Um, but it still has the, poss- the the capabilities to do all this. And that's why it's also outputting uh, 1440 or 1080p if you're on a 1080p uh, TV. Is because the pro- graphics processor is not as great. So, I mean, it's about a third as much. And uh, outputting 4K is about three times as much of, uh, of a burden on the processor, the graphics processor. So that's that's where the difference is there. Uh, so that's a lot of uh, it, it. And uh, to throw this in, uh, since I don't have it up here on the on the screen, the PlayStation 5 very 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 similar as far as the processor running at about the same speed with about the same amount of cores. The same similar type of uh, graphics processor unit, the same uh, about the same about the same about the same amount of uh, flops or teraflops that it can run at the same time. Um, so the PS5 and it's slight, slightly less than the Xbox Series X. Uh, so as far as what the games are going to look like when they're on uh, PS5 compared to Xbox Series X, they're going to look very very similar. Um, and then compared to a Series S, if you're on a uh, standard high definition TV, um, especially with the upscaling to 4K, you're not going to notice a whole lot. Um, hopefully, uh, it's just the the most uh, I guess the highest end games that are pushing the graphics card the most. There there'll be a bit of a difference. I'd say if you played it on the Series S, you're going to be like, oh, man, this is pretty cool. And if you go to Series X, you might be like, oh, you know, it seems a little a little bit better. Um, if you're playing it on uh, Xbox One X, uh, where it's optimized for that, then it's going to be, a, again, a bit of a downgrade again. Uh, so as far as how you want to spend your money... If if uh, so, here's where the S comes in handy here. So it's three hundred bucks, very very affordable compared to what video game consoles have been costing lately. That's kind of like a price you see a year afterwards around uh, Christmas time, or possibly two years after, where they're trying to get the most out of they can, uh, most they can out of uh, selling their consoles. Um, it's downscaled a bit, so you just need to ask yourself, you know. Are you playing this on a 4K TV? Have you are you big into the visuals? Do you know that the 4K uh, can you really tell the difference between 4K and upscaled 4K? Um, can you? I get it depends on what type of games you're playing. Um, I know Corey was talking about sports games are going to look really really nice, and that's very true because they have the core mechanics down and the code down, what they're adding to the games a lot of times is the uh, graphical overhauls to make it look nicer, uh, which is, is nice for us too, to be able to see uh, all these stadiums in their glory, the nice uh, shiny helmets, the dirt on the uniforms, all that kind of stuff is very, very cool. Um, the more realistic looking players, all that's very cool. But uh, if you have games like uh, Battlefield, where you have stuff blowing up, you have uh, bullets flying, you have uh, dirty environments that you're running around in. That's going to look nice too. It, it's just a matter of, like I said, if you if you're a PC gamer, you already know this. If you're setting the the sliders down to the bottom for uh, shading and all that stuff, um, there, I'd say for me as a gamer, as a computer gamer, um, if you get the sliders all the way down, then you start really noticing some janky graphics, and it's kind of funny almost. But if you're in the middle, whether you're a few clicks down or a few clicks up, it looks about the same. And if you have it cranked up all the way to the high side, that's where you're going to have some beautiful graphics. Uh, so I'd say, man, that $300 price point is really, really nice. And uh, here's one more thing I want to reiterate, especially with Xbox Series X, because the 
PlayStation 5, and I heard that they're wanting to put more PlayStation games out on CPU or computer, PC. That'd be really, really neat. Uh, but especially for Xbox Series X, because Microsoft is a computer company too. They don't want to have their games locked down to an Xbox console. They want their games to be as uh, available as possible so they can make a little more licensing and a little more sales off of those games. Uh, so it s sounds and seems like almost all the games coming out for Xbox Series X are going to be available as PC versions. A lot of them at least, especially the first party X uh, Microsoft games. So what is the Xbox Series X for then? Well, it basically is a, a big monster PC inside of a box. And if you're looking at it that way, because it can it can do stuff for you. It you can download apps, you can browse the web, you can um, get on Twitch, you can stream through Twitch, all from your Xbox. Um, and if you look at it as a computer like that, it's five hundred dollars. That's kind of expensive for a game console. But if you're thinking about it like a computer, it is a top notch computer. It's probably better than my computer is. Uh, and my computer is pretty darn good, especially now that I added an extra 16 gigs of RAM. But it is a top-notch computer. If you bought this as an actual computer, put it together yourself, or bought it that somebody else put it together, I would estimate it would cost... Um, I, I think it would cost about $1,500. And I said $1,500 to $2,000 before. I kind of forgot that uh, they're not giving you a monitor with this. The monitor is a good, uh, a good deal of price when you're putting together a new computer but it's giving you all the innards of the computer along with a controller uh, and yeah so for all that I'd say if because this graphic processor is pretty much top-notch you're getting 16 gigs of RAM you're getting uh, a really good regular just regular processor um, it is about fifteen hundred dollars worth of computer right there and of course Microsoft's uh, able to jack the price down a little bit uh, to get people to want to buy it but that's what you're buying is a really 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 nice computer it's it is a good value and again that goes with the ps5 but the ps5 is more of console only not as much of a uh, pc substitute and even if you're looking at the series s you're still getting the very very fine processor a good graphics processor uh, and uh yeah, the ability to play 4K games and uh, be able to play upscaled to 4K, 1440 at 60 frames per second, up to 120 frames per second. That's still a good value, not as great as the S Series X, but still a very good value. And um, I think, yeah, it's just, as far as value goes, it's it's something you want to jump on before things go south. If you, if you were somebody that had movie pass. While it was going on, you're able to see, you know, unlimited movies for ten dollars a month. Uh, I jumped on that. I used it. I had fun with it, and I knew it wasn't going to last. In fact, they went out of business because it, they couldn't last. Uh, but I got good use out of it while I could. I feel that way with Game Pass. I feel like they're like, okay, let's throw everything in this. This try to get as many people on it. This is going to help us sell our console. This is going to help us get people to want to make games for Xbox and uh maybe it won't last maybe they'll be like okay this is not sustainable we need to get rid of it but while it's here i'm wanting to take advantage of it so what am i going to do personally i think i want to put in for an xbox series x i think i also want to put in for a ps5 now here's the tricky part for me is that they're both limited because they're always limited when they first come out, but they're also limited due to uh, not as many being manufactured because of COVID. So prices of them are going to be kind of large. Do I want to buy one to sell, make two or three hundred dollars, or do I want to buy them and keep them for myself? If I had to guess what I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to get a PS5. I'm probably going to try and sell that. I'm going to get an Xbox Series X. I'm probably going to keep that. But when I have the Xbox Series X, depending on its backwards compatibility, I might be able to sell my Xbox One 
and ditto with if you get a PS5, you're not going to need your PS4 anymore. Apparently, it's going to be able to uh, be backwards compatible with all PS4. So you can sell that and get a little bit of money back. But it's also going to be playing uh, HD, uh, Ultra HD uh, Blu-ray movies. So I could sell my Ultra HD Blu-ray player for 100 bucks. We will see when it comes out. Of course, uh, if you want one, you're definitely going to have to jump in on it as soon as pre-orders are opened. Sony hasn't really announced when theirs is. Actually, Sony, if okay, so if you haven't done this already, Sony, if you want a PS5 uh, pre-ordered to make sure that you're going to get one at its retail value on the day that it comes out, Sony's having kind of a lottery where you have to sign in with your Sony PlayStation uh, network account, uh, and they're going to pick randomly out of a hat or however they're going to do it, uh, give those people an option to be able to pre-order it and buy it straight from Sony. And I believe that's the only place that you can get it right away. As far as Xbox goes, they're going to be giving it out to everybody that the normal retailers that have it. Uh, you just have to pre-order from Amazon or Target or Walmart or GameStop or any of the other places that you would normally get it. They also have the option to, uh, to do a financing option. If you don't want to pay $500 right away, uh, you can finance it, pay a little bit monthly until you have it all paid off. I forget exactly who they're doing it through, but it's through Microsoft, so that sounds trustworthy. And um, part of that financing comes with Xbox Game Pass just to get you hooked into it. Now here's the, the extra value between um, PS5 and Xbox is looking at what games they have coming out. Xbox has some exciting games, even if I'm not a huge American gamer. Um, and they're all going to be part of Game Pass, so I don't have to buy them all. Uh, Sony, I need to see what they're coming out with, but I'm usually more excited for Sony because, again, I like the Japanese games. Uh, I might be able to wait for that one, though. Yes, uh, Corey, and this I want to specify this for Corey and anybody else who doesn't know. With uh, the PS5, you can use your PS4 controller to play PS4 games. You can't use your PS4 controller to play PS5 games. They have clarified that. Uh, but the system comes with a PS5 controller, so that's all good. And if, for example, you want to play a multiplayer game, uh, like a racing game, on, PS4, on your PS5, that is a PS4 racing game, you can use a PS4 controller, you can use a PS5 controller, now you have two controllers, you can play with friends. Uh, so I hope this helps uh, let you know what to expect from these consoles. Uh, I'm saying whatever, you, whatever way you go with, I think you're going to have a lot of fun. These are monster computers, which uh, it reminds me of a little anecdote I'm going to leave you with before I head out here. When the Xbox 360 came out, it also was a monster computer for the time. The Xbox 360, if it would have come out two years prior, it would have been the third fastest supercomputer on Earth. That's how advanced it was, and I feel like these are somewhat close uh, with their power right now and the advanced uh, technology. So I hope I helped out showing you what to expect, what um, gets you a little hyped up for these new releases. Uh, just want to leave you with check out me streaming Flight Sim probably tomorrow, maybe some Fall Guys later today. Check out uh, Bear Side of the Mat with me and John Bear talking about wrestling on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern. Check out my YouTube for That Mat 85, this show. Bear Side of the Mat for our archive shows and special singles content. Check out uh, uh, Bearded Reviews for movie reviews. And uh, check out my Twitter that, at ThatMat85 to check out the schedule and everything else going on. I want to thank everybody that's in the chat, everybody that watched me, everybody that's going to watch me in the video on demand, and everybody that's watching me on YouTube. Leave comments if you're on t YouTube. Leave likes. It helps me out, and I appreciate it very much. Have a good day, guys.